Hi, welcome to a quick introduction to Apache Spark. This is a quick start video, um, providing a very basic overview of what Apache Spark is um, and the kind of scenarios that you might want to consider using Apache Spark. Uh, the video itself assumes no prior knowledge of Apache Spark, um, but if you have some familiarity with uh, data processing, business intelligence uh, or even Hadoop-like environments that can help uh, but uh, absolutely not a mandate uh, for this video. So it's really a quick introduction video. Uh, so in this video we'll take a look at um, some of the building blocks of um, Apache Spark. So what is Apache Spark? What are the building blocks of Apache Spark and a high-level architectural view of uh, what are the distributed components of Apache Spark? Uh, so Basically, Apache Spark is uh, a fast, really quick, um, uh, high-performant, distributed cluster computing system. Now, those are some key words that uh, come into play when you're thinking about big data and large-scale data analytics. Um, so unlike other data processing systems like Hadoop, um, Apache Spark is uh, really much faster. Um, in terms of um, the computation as well as how it re utilizes resources such as memory uh, to perform a lot of uh, iterative computations. It is general purpose uh, in the idea that um, Spark uh, is uh, both suitable for doing batch-based processing as well as real-time processing. So if you didn't use Apache Spark, uh, chances are for batch-like processing, you would have had to use a framework like uh, Hadoop and MapReduce uh, in Hadoop. And for doing real-time processing, you may have looked at other frameworks like Apache Storm, for example. Uh, whereas with Spark, you can actually do both. I mean, it gives you the flexibility and a single unified framework, if you will, uh, and programming approach to handling both batch-based as well as real-time. So again, it's a very powerful combination of using one single uh, product or framework to address different kinds of data processing needs, be it um, uh, ETL-like or analytical-style workloads. And um, again, just uh, keeping in mind that Apache Spark is really intended for large scale um, data processing. Uh, so if, uh, if your data basically fits into the remit of um, you know, a single large server, then of course Apache Spark might not be that optimal. Uh, it really uh, shines when you have uh, huge volumes of data. Fundamentally, if you have like a big data, uh, kind of like a challenge, then Apache Spark is definitely a contender. And then finally, in terms of um, the the programming experience itself, um, Apache Spark has been built on top of Scala, the programming language. So it's uh, it's basically runs on a JVM. Uh, however, if you did want to program for Apache Spark, so Scala becomes a good good choice there. Um, I mean, the code is very elegant, um, thanks to uh, you know Scala being a very modern programming language uh, with its various functional programming constructs. It makes um, programming in Spark uh, fairly straightforward. However, if you come from a Java background, uh, you can code in Java as well. And uh, Python becomes a first-class citizen. Uh, so a lot of um, data scientists and members in the community, they're very familiar with uh, Python as a programming language. So it's easy to get started with Python. Uh, and finally, as of um, the introduction with um, uh, Apache Spark 1.4, R is also a supported programming language and increasing momentum in terms of uh, the broader community using uh, R and Apache Spark together. Keeping in mind that Apache Spark uh, normally, uh, I mean, it's uh, this block here is what's referred to as a core, uh, uh, the Apache Spark core. And that's the core framework which allows for a lot of the magic to actually happen with an Apache Spark, which we'll cover uh, in the next two slides. But on top of Apache Spark, as part of uh, uh, the libraries, you have a few other capabilities uh, worthwhile highlighting. So it comes with Spark uh, SQL. So Spark SQL allows you to use SQL-like constructs or query constructs uh, to query structured data. And that structured data could be in a CSV file, it could be a JSON file, it could of course be in a SQL-like repository. Um, uh, so again, it gives you that ease of programming um, with the various types of uh, structured uh, information. 
And then we talked about Spark streaming. So it's really intended if you're doing real-time or close to real-time processing. Uh, keep in mind that um, it, it uh, it's not a, a true real-time processing system like uh, Apache Storm. It uses what's referred to as micro-batching, but um, basically it gives you very, very low, um, uh, you know, um, the latency is not too bad, but uh, it's not uh, a true real-time system, but for 95, 99% of the scenarios, micro-batching would suffice. Uh, Spark also comprises of uh, a machine learning library, so that's one of the areas that Spark really excels in terms of uh, its, uh, its use of uh, memory and the underlying implementation for iterative algorithms, uh, again very, very suitable for doing machine learning uh, like tasks. And uh, finally, uh, you also have the GraphX. So if you want to do graph processing and computation related to graphs, um, Apache Spark gives you a framework to do that kind of processing. So that's uh, kind of like, uh, if you will, uh, the Apache Spark in a nutshell. Uh, looking at some of the concepts and terms that come into play, particularly if you're looking to develop uh, Apache Spark solutions, you're either a developer slash architect or a technical person. Um, these are some of the constructs that you will come across as you dive into Apache Spark. Uh, the magic of that distributed uh, processing and how it manages um, that data and uh, the transformation of that data, which we'll talk about in a bit, is entirely managed through the Resilient Distributed Dataset, or RDD. And that's where Spark does most of the handling in terms of the transformation and managing their data lineage. So that's um, something which we'll dive into detail in uh, future workshops and future videos. You have what's called as the direct acyclic graph. Um, so essentially what happens is uh, when, when you run uh, an application within Apache Spark, it basically constructs a graph, uh, a graph comprising of uh, nodes and edges. And it basically forms that sequence of computation, if you will, that needs to be performed on the data. Uh, where, uh, basically you have this uh, large graph-like model. So again, you have uh, nodes that uh, would typically be mapped to RDDs, so it basically constructs that execution flow, if you will, um, and um, that's really the magic behind Apache Spark, uh, as opposed to the Hadoop-like environment, which entirely depended on MapReduce. You have what's called as a Spark context. Um, so um, I'll highlight this in the next slide, but essentially uh, the, the program, um, you have something what's referred to as a driver, and the driver instantiates the Spark context. And the Spark context uh, uh, does m a lot of the orchestration, if you will, or manages the orchestration uh, within a Spark cluster. The next concept is about transformation. So um, it, it'll become clearer once we step through some of the other future demos. Uh, but essentially, when you load data, say for example, from uh, a data store, it could be like a CSV, and you load that data into an RDD, uh, RDDs are basically uh, immutable, so you can't change that. Once you perform an action, I'm sorry, once you perform um, a certain act, activities on an RDD, um, like say for example, if you were to do a filter or if you were to do a map-like operation, it creates a new RDD and that's collectively what's called as transformation. And then finally, you have what are called as actions. Now, anything within Spark, uh, keep in mind, is done through a process of lazy loading. That basically means that when the DAG is created, it does not actually do any form of computation or execution of the underlying data till it's actually required. So it's almost like a lazy load process, and uh, that has a lot of benefits, um, in part because that allows for uh, some form of resilience, if you will, uh, within this whole RDD and the DAG model, so so that only when somebody requests for the actual data does it actually need to do all the processing. So it almost leaves processing towards the very end or just as and when needed. 
Um, so if you're extracting data, like I, if you're trying to collect the data, get counts, etc., these are all what are referred to as actions. So again, keep in mind that um, transformation, if you think of a flow, um, a, a process or a sequence of events within Apache Spark, um, it comprises of many, many transformations and a uh, few actions that ultimately result in uh, the underlying um, the logic, if you will, being implemented in Apache Spark. And finally, the last thing we'll take a look at in this video is really about a high level view of the various Spark components. Uh, so Spark, as you may recall, is a distributed computational engine. So it does need to cater for that um, you know, high performance computational model as well as resilience uh, and uh, fault tolerance. And the way it addresses that is uh, using a couple of constructs. So one, we have uh, what's referred to as a driver program. So if you've uh, started Apache Spark in the Spark shell, uh, the Spark shell becomes your driver program. Otherwise, if you have, um, if you've written an application, say in Scala or uh, Java, um, basically um, the program that runs it, basically the entry point, which is the main function, actually creates what's referred to as the Spark context. And the Spark context really allows for communication and coordination with uh, other uh, nodes within your cluster, what's referred to as a worker node. Now, within the worker node, you have what's referred to as an executor. Uh, so uh, the way you can think of it is anytime you run an application, a Spark application that is, it'll create a, uh, a different process within a uh, worker node. So every application, a Spark application is running uh, within its own executor. So a worker node will have many number of executors. And uh, within the executors, you may remember, as we discussed within uh, the Spark model, um, so you have the DAG which constructs the graph, which is then broken down to stages and tasks. And these individual tasks are then um, run from within the executor. Now, before uh, the actual Spark application runs on the cluster, of course, the Spark context um, or the driver program in this particular case communicates with uh, the cluster manager. Now Spark has uh, different cluster um, managers that uh, you can utilize. So you have uh, an out of the box Spark um, cluster uh, manager itself. And that's the simplest one. And since it's uh, available when you install Spark, uh, it tends to be the default for a lot many uh, development testing and even uh, uh, quite many number of production environments. However, you can uh, replace that with uh, uh, Yarn, um, uh, Yarn, or even Apache Mesos as a good cluster manager. Uh, so again, um, both uh, Yarn and Mesos give you other more advanced cluster managing capabilities like putting stuff into a queue, for example. Uh, but uh, for a lot many of the cases, and particularly to begin with, uh, you can use the out-of-the-box uh, Spark provided cluster managing capability. So that's a quick overview of uh, Apache Spark. Um, so we have taken a look at what a, exactly Apache Spark is and some of the, uh, the keywords, if you will, or the building blocks of Apache Spark. And then finally, a very high level view, if you will, of uh, the distributed nature of uh, Apache Spark. And in future videos in the series, we'll cover uh, a lot of these in more details and um, do some hands-on demos. Uh, hope you like the video and look forward to seeing you in other videos in the series. Thanks for watching.